Don't buy into the lie spread by the media that you have to support Israel or Palestine. It's a false dichotomy. As Christians, we need to speak up for the church in the Middle East. And Christian concern asked the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York to speak up for him. And what did those so-called leaders of the church do? Useless. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. So tell me, tell me when. Okay. So I want to talk about Christian Zionism, and I want to talk about the situation in Palestine and Israel. And I want to talk about why, as Christians, we shouldn't give unfettered support to Israel. Unfettered support and unqualified support to Israel is speaking and working against what the scriptures teach. The scriptures teach that the body of Christ is a single unit made up of many parts. If we were read in 1 Corinthians 12, and I'm just going to take it from verse 23, and those members of the body which we deem less honourable, on these we bestow more abundant honour, and on our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honour to that member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the member may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honoured, all the members rejoice with it. So, in Palestine, there are Christians who are suffering because of the policies of Israel. They suffer because they are Palestinian. They have their rights to attend church restricted. They suffer under economic embargoes. They suffer when Israel bombs Palestine. Those Christians are deserving of our solidarity and our support. Christian Zionism makes a fetish of the state of Israel while Christians suffer at the hands of Israel. And it isn't just in Palestine. In Israel itself, Christians suffer discrimination at the hands of Israel. Now, for those Christians who give unqualified support to Israel, I would ask you, are not Palestinian Christians also part of the body? Do they not also deserve your support? Do they not also deserve your solidarity? How then can we support them without buying into this false dichotomy that you must either be for the Palestinian cause or against it, or for Israel and against it. It's about giving qualified support to Israel. Qualified support to Israel means that you are not frightened to speak out against Israel when Israel's policies harm the Palestinian church. However, that does not follow that we should climb into bed with terrorists like Hamas, like Islamic Jihad, like Hezbollah. Thank you. Thank you. The idea of unqualified support to Israel doesn't equal support for terrorist organizations. The reality is that Hamas, Hezbollah, Islamic Jihad, if they ever succeed against Israel, they will also persecute the church because they are also supporting and persecuting the church right now. Christians in Palestine are not free, and they are not free because of Hezbollah. They are not free because of Hamas. They are not free because of Islamic Jihad. So as Christians, we must not buy into 
the false dichotomy of being for Israel and against Palestine or for Palestine and being against Israel. You can support Israel's fight against Hamas whilst also criticizing Israel for the way that they treat, persecute and persecute the Christians inside Israel and Palestine. Therefore, what as Christians can we do? And let's remember that whilst the world is obsessing about this question between Palestine and Israel, the Ethiopian government is carrying out a genocide against the Tigri Christians of Ethiopia. That the Christians of Armenia are still suffering under Azerbaijani occupation. That the Christians of Burma are still fighting for their freedom against the Burmese government that has also persecuted the Rohingya Muslims. So what as Christians can we do? This is what you can do. Firstly, you can stop looking for someone else to save you and you can look to yourselves. You can act firstly as an individual. As an individual, you can speak out. You can use your social platforms to speak out about persecuted Christians. The most important thing that any individual Christian can do for the persecuted church is talk about it. Talk to your friends about it. Talk to your work colleagues about it. Talk to your church about it. Talk to your enemies about it. Talk to people about the persecuted church. Draw them in to the idea of solidarity with persecuted Christians. The second thing that you can do is that you can form groups of solidarity that are active in your local community. You can go to the high street, you can leaflet in the high street and you can talk to people about the persecuted church. Engage believer and unbeliever about the plight of persecuted Christians. Those groups of solidarity can also be active amongst the churches of your local community. The third thing that you can do to support the persecuted church is that groups of solidarity can link up with one another and act at a regional level to support the persecuted church. You can do funding collections like they do on the street collecting to raise money to be sent to persecuted Christians. You can organize local, regional protests about the persecuted church. You can hold public prayer events. You can hold public talks about the persecuted church. Groups of solidarity can network regionally to organize themselves in solidarity of persecuted Christians. The fourth thing that you can do is that groups of solidarity that are regional can link up with one another organically to organize national events, national protests, national campaigns, national information campaigns, national protests. You can organize it so that everyone from your church, week after week after week, goes to the MP's constituency to talk about persecuted Christians. The fifth thing that you can do is that national organization of solidarity can link up internationally with other national groups of solidarity so that these networks of Christian solidarity can move manpower, resources, skills and information to where it is most needed. This can be done organically without any central point of organization, without any central leadership. All it requires or Christians to have that narrative of solidarity and the determination 
to act upon it. It doesn't have to be centrally organized. So what can you do? You can act individually. You can form into groups. Those groups can form into regional networks. Those regional networks can form into national networks. Those national networks can form into international networks. And what should be the guiding narrative of these networks? The first one is to do good to all people, but especially those in the house of faith. Our solidarity must be towards the persecuted Christian. We must stand up for persecuted Christians by word and by deed. If you cannot speak out, pray. If you can speak out, do so. If you can do more than speaking out, do so. It is only when Christians become more serious about defending the church that the world will take the church more seriously. So do what you can, whether it be at an individual level, a group level, a regional level, or a national level. Link up with other like-minded Christians within the body of Christ, regardless of the denomination that they come from. Don't buy into the lie spread by the media that you have to support Israel or Palestine. It's a false dichotomy. As Christians, we need to speak up for the church in the Middle East. We need to organize ourselves to campaign for the establishment of a Christian state in the Middle East, where Christians can organize their own economy, can organize their own culture, can organize their own politic, can organize their own security. It is an established fact that the Christians of the Middle East will never be safe until they are free, until they are independent, until they can control their own destiny. Christians, it's time that you started to act like Christians and you started to see the church as the loci of your organization in politics, society, economy, and culture. That is how we become church again. That is how we deal with the persecuted church for the plight of the Christians. Ignore the Archbishop of Canterbury, who just recently, this week, turned his back on a Christian chaplain who gave a sermon about homosexuality and was reported to the terrorist prevent teaching. And Christian Concern asked the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Archbishop of York to speak up for him. And what did those so-called leaders of the church do? Nothing. Nothing at all. The leaders of the church are nothing but cooks and cowards and lively livered, spineless, yellow bellied Judases to the church. Organize yourselves, Christians. Don't look to America. Don't look to Russia. Don't look to the EU. Don't look to NATO. Don't look to the UN. Look to yourselves and organize yourselves accordingly in networks of solidarity. Any questions? Yes, bro. Every Christian is born again. Any questions going once? Go on, bro. Sorry? It's not related to the topic, bro. Any questions on the topic? Okay. I'll go on to my next topic.